Hi, for this video, I do want to show you how to find the inverse of the logarithmic functions that are listed below. Um, I do also want to show you how to find the domain in the range of both the original function and its inverse. Okay, so let's start with the domain and range. So the domain of this function, remember that um, the logarithm does have to be greater than zero. So x plus five does have to be greater than zero. So if I solved this, that means that x has to be greater than negative five. So our domain in interval notation would be from negative five to infinity. Okay, the range for logarithms, remember, is just going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so that's an important concept to understand. You would have a vertical asymptote at negative five, um, but I'm not gonna write that down, but just so that you know, you would have a vertical asymptote at negative five. So now let's find the inverse. When I'm finding the inverse, I like to rewrite f of x as y, just because it's easier in the problem to write it as y instead of f of x. And then remember what an inverse does is it switches our y and our x terms, and then we solve for y. So I would say that x is equal to the natural log of y plus 5. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to solve for y right here. We want to get y by itself, so that would give us our inverse function. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to rewrite this in exponential form. Remember that for natural log, it's understood to be base e. So if I rewrite this in exponential form, we would have e to the x power is equal to y plus five. And then our final step is to get y by itself. So I would move the five to the other side, and we would say that e to the x minus five is equal to y. We would write this in function notation, so we would say f of negative one to the x power, this is the inverse function, is equal to e to the x minus five. So this would be our inverse function. Remember that what happens is the domain of our inverse is equal to the range of our original function. So our domain for exponential functions is negative infinity to positive infinity, and then our range is going to be the opposite of this one, or is going to be the domain of the original. So we would say that it's negative five to positive infinity. So for this one, it would have, an, it would have a horizontal asymptote at negative five. Okay, so let's look at another one just to make sure that you understand the concept. And it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with natural logs or log of any base, you're gonna do the same steps. So for this one, to find our domain, we would only take the x minus three part. The plus three is not in the parentheses, so it does not impact the domain. So we would say that x minus three has to be greater than zero, which means that x has to be greater than three. So we would say that our domain is from three to infinity. Our range for logarithms is always negative infinity to positive infinity. So now to find the inverse, we would start by saying that y equals log base 2 of x minus 3 plus 3. We are going to switch our x and our y, so we're going to change the location of those. So I'm going to say that x is equal to log base 2 of y minus 3 plus 3. Okay, so in the last one, we didn't have anything on the outside of the logarithm. This time we do, so we do have to isolate this first. So we wanna move the positive three to the other side, which would make it negative three. So remember, our goal is to get y completely by itself, but in order to do that, we do have to simplify the group that it's part of. Okay, so our next step would be to rewrite it in exponential form. So our base is two, our exponent is x minus three, and this would equal y minus three. And then to find y, all we would have to do is move the three to the other side. Okay, so we would end up with two to the x minus three, whoops, plus three equals y. So if we wrote this in function notation, we would say the inverse of f of x is equal to 2 to the x minus 3 power 
plus 3. And make sure that you can tell that the x minus 3 is an exponent and it is not written next to. The plus 3 is on the outside. It is not contained in the exponent. Okay, so remember for this, our domain is going to be the same as the range of our original function. So our original function was negative infinity to positive infinity. And then our range is going to be the domain of the original one, so it would be from positive 3 to infinity. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.